All right, welcome back to the Find Me in Seattle podcast. This is episode six. I am your host every single Friday. My name is Connor Kaysen. I am the founder and operator here at Find Me in Seattle. It's it's just me here at the company. Everything you see on the internet from the videos to the photos to this podcast is all done by me. I run a small little marketing consulting firm here in Seattle. I help a ton of local businesses with their internet presence and I built one of my own. My goal here at Find Me in Seattle is to educate you and help you find new, cool, interesting people, places, things, happenings going on around here in Seattle. And uh, thanks for joining me this week. If you're joining me there on YouTube or here on the podcast, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me talk. And so this week, I want to start with some news happening in Seattle because one of the big announcements was the fact that uh, the Pike Place Market newsstand which has been there for 40 years, announced that they are going to be shutting down on December 31st. For any of you who haven't been to Pike Place Market, I'm sure that you know what the name is, uh, but there's this famous newsstand right on the corner on the south end of the market that uh, everyone knows about. And they've been struggling. And I think that's pretty obvious why they've been struggling because no one's buying newspapers anymore or magazines uh, and people traveling. You can get your news anywhere on the internet. And the article said that they've mostly been surviving because of bubble gum sales because they're right around the corner from the gum wall and so that's a majority of their transactions is people go to the gum wall and they go up around the corner and they can buy you know sticks of gum for three dollars which is probably like a significant markup and and something that they noticed that hey we're selling a lot of gum we need to make these profitable for us and so unfortunately the new stand will be shutting down on december 31st if you're in pike place market um, go at least take a look, breathe it in, capture that memory. Cause who knows what it's going to be. I mean, it's a big, long space. So I'm curious, are they going to retrofit it? Are they just going to leave it empty? Is it going to be an art display? Uh, there is it's prime real estate. So we'll see what goes in there. Um, but end of an era, Pike place newsstand will be going away December 31st, 2019. Another article that caught my attention this week was uh, the fact that the Seattle Public Library, which is probably one of my favorite places in the entire city, the library has, I should, I could do a whole episode on the library, but it's absolutely stunning, an architectural masterpiece inside, in right in downtown. And uh, if you've seen me on Instagram, I am very likely found on the top floor, which I think is like one of the most hidden gems in the city to go to the top floor of the library. They've got great, great Wi-Fi. It's completely free. It's really quiet. They've got plenty of outlets. Uh, they got a coffee shop in the bottom and you can really be very productive uh, anywhere in the library. But that top floor, they have all these, uh, this like curved glass, not curved glass, but slanted glass ceiling that goes down into a point. And it's just, uh, it's just breathtaking. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to work. There's probably no better free area in the entire city to work except at the public library. So back to the news, the Seattle public library decided that they're going to eliminate daily fines for overdue materials starting on January 2nd. Right. And I'm a little baffled by this. I know that in the article that I read that there's been a bunch of libraries already attempt this or they've rolled that out and they've seen a lot of success. And what their underlying principle and and why they're doing this is because they are afraid that if you incur a late fee on a book, it deters you from returning to the library. Right? And so... Now, what's holding people to not keep the books? That's that's really where I'm stuck, is if you're eliminating overdue fees for books and materials, I guess books are just, it just sounds like books are free now. And um, yeah, I'm just a little confused. Like how do you put pressure on people to return the things that they borrow? And And maybe... I should have more faith in humanity and just understand that like, all right, and and I do. I think most people are just going to return the book themselves and this isn't an issue. Those people probably weren't even getting late fees anyways. So it takes a little bit of that burden off, but I just feel like, uh, unfortunately, the library is a place 
uh, where the homeless like to gather. And, and if they're the ones that are the issue, what's, what's the pressure of them bringing the book back? I'm, I'm worried of what's going to happen to these books, but I'm standing on my pedestal, which is kind of ridiculous. I don't really even care. I shouldn't care at least because I haven't checked out a book from the Seattle Public Library ever. I've checked out a lot of books, but I use this app called Overdrive, uh, which is uh, partnered with the library and the library when they get all their physical books inventory in every weekday, month, whatever it is, they also get digital copies. And so they release these digital copies through the app. I think there's a new app as well. And uh, you can kind of get in line, put them on hold and it drops it right into the app right when it's available, which is just awesome. I recommend it to all of you guys. If you do have a library card, uh, check out the Overdrive app. They've also got audiobooks on there. And so, uh, and that's timed. I think you can request up to three weeks for the book, and then it pretty much automatically returns the book for you. The only hack that you, I've been able to get around for a couple days is if you turn off, if you have like a Kindle and you unplug the Wi-Fi or you turn off the Wi-Fi, uh, you can usually get it to last for like a couple more days uh, on your device. But obviously it doesn't sync up. It's not gonna remember where you are. Um, so hopefully you can just read the book in three weeks. But I'm, I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen with the books in the Seattle Public Library uh, and what's gonna be the loss how many books are going to be lost over the course of a year uh, or damaged or not returned or just treated less because there really is no punishment. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, the one kicker to this story is if the book is not returned 31 days, the replacement fee is added to your account. So, um, yeah, I guess that it, there still is a fee. It's just not, if it's one week late, two weeks late, you pretty much have an entire month to return your book or else you're buying the book. Um, and so, yeah, very curious to see how that's going to go. Actually, while I'm talking about it now, it's like, all right, I guess that is the, I got to return the book in a month, but it's like, why not just make the rental for two months? I don't know. Um, all right, let's move on. That's, that's my rant about the library. The big thing over here, download the Overdrive app. Go sit on the top floor of the library. It's a great place to work. Um, all right, so outside of Seattle, something I wanted to talk about that, that got launched here, uh, not launched, but released by Google, is Google this week unveiled their Google's year in search. So it's all the top things that are trending and what were the most searched items in each category. And uh, I've, I've skimmed them a little bit, but I just kind of want to go over and, and uh, spit out some thoughts about just the interesting things that we're obsessed with Googling. And so the number one thing searched in 2019 was India versus South Africa. And that is related to the Cricket World Cup. And that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of people uh, in India and with Indian descent. And so uh, them performing how they did in the Cricket World Cup is no surprise while they're at, at the top. The second one is where I was actually very surprised. Uh, I had to Google this person. Their name was Cameron Boyce. They were a uh, former Disney star um, on a few different shows and he um, had a seizure, I believe, and passed away over the summer. And he is all over these lists. And uh, it's, it, I mean, it's pretty amazing, right? Um, he, he must have made a really good impression. I'm sorry, I'm not super familiar with his work. But yeah, that was pretty much the one big, I was like, who is that? I am not familiar. Um, Cameron Boyce was there, and then number two was Nipsey Hussle. I'm a lot more familiar with Nipsey Hussle. The most searched song, I think everyone could probably guess. Number one was Old Town Road. Lil Nas X broke all the records thanks to uh, his TikTok presence. And I'm sure he was number one by a mile. Number two in songs was Seven Rings. Three was Shallow, four was Senorita, um, looking down there. Uh, number eight was Sunflower by Post Malone. I heard that song so many times. I think that Spider-Man movie came out just about a year ago, but Sunflower lasted for a real long time. And then uh, Billie Eilish, bad guy, rounds out the top 10. What else was here? Back to searches, the Copa America was up there. Uh, that's a month-long soccer tournament, so that makes sense. There was also Bangladesh versus India, 
which was number four. So it's very interesting that three of the top four were sports related, uh, and two of them were related to cricket, which is very unexpected here in America. Uh, just something that we don't know. Number five, the iPhone 11. No shocker there. Number six, everyone's favorite TV show, Game of Thrones, ended this year. And uh, I would be very curious to know how many of these Game of Thrones searches were negative. I guess that's more tweets. But uh, yeah, the Game of Thrones hype crashed and burned real hard with that that ending and that final season. Uh, that was That was such a fun thing to be a part of. I didn't really take it. It's, it's seriously, I wasn't so mad about the way it ended as a lot of people were. Uh, I was more entertained by the fact that everyone had such an extreme reaction. Closing a show that, that that's that big is almost impossible. But I guess Star Wars came out, I guess last night, and the early reviews are saying that it lives up to the hype. So, so maybe I'm wrong there. It's, it's hard to, to match that. Avengers Endgame, maybe the biggest movie of all time. If Star Wars, Star Wars probably beat it. But uh, that's up there. Joker was number eight. Number nine was Notre Dame. That just speaks how big that college is and how strong their brand is, that they are the ninth most searched thing of this relatively small college in South Bend, Indiana, is the ninth most Googled thing. And and maybe they want something in some more obscure sports. But yeah, the fact that they're number nine still kind of blows my mind. Number 10, ICC Cricket World Cup. No surprise there. In people with Google search, Antonio Brown, he pretty much was in the news every single week in the off season at the Oakland Raiders. So he kept his name around a lot. Neymar was up there. That's probably more related to Copa America. Um, James Charles, number four is, uh, is it, <laughs> I get stuck with his name. I've seen the Chappelle skit so many times that I just want to call him Juicy. Uh, but it's uh, just Jesse, Jesse Smollett. However you say his name, he's number four. I'm not surprised to say his name up there. He's probably not too happy to be on this list. That's not what he wanted to be up there for. Number five was Kevin Hart, who is just a behemoth of a person right now. Uh, he's all over the place. Super funny. I love I'm, I love him and The Rock. I just love that they're best friends. Billie Eilish, number six. Number seven. seven. Uh, number seven is uh, everyone's favorite uh, environmentalist, Greta Thunberg. Number eight was R. Kelly. That's a real negative place for him to be because that was the end of his career. Number nine, Joaquin Phoenix, who with coming out with the Joker has just put him up there. And then Jordan Woods was number 10. Um, gosh, Jordan Woods, maybe I'm wrong here, but uh, was she the one that was cheating on one of the Kardashians? That's brutal. That is brutal. To, a lot of people on these Google searches for negative things. Only a few of them are up there. Like, Greta's up there for good. Billy, Kevin. It's tough. It's tough. You do something wrong, you get Googled a lot, I guess. Um, all right. So, what else is in here? TV shows. I'd, I'd be curious to ask you guys what you thought the most trending TV shows. We already talked about Game of Thrones. We know that's number one. But number two... Most searched thing on Google this year for TV shows, Stranger Things. Number three was Chernobyl. Four was When They See Us. I haven't watched that one. And number five, uh, which I think is a kind of a big shocker in my opinion, The Umbrella Academy, which is about like these misfits who were adopted and, and become superheroes. And it's a very dark superhero story, but I, I really enjoyed it. I think I'm excited for season two. I'm trying to think like what's not up here. Uh, I think if... The Mandalorian debuted a little bit earlier. No doubt that would be up here. I think that was up here on some other lists. Um, but they haven't made it yet and the, the show's not over. So Baby Yoda, I thought could have been the time person of the year with how many, how, how many memes Baby Yoda's been a part of. So I'm sure that will jump up here or it'll be part of the list. Actually, I'm driven expanding this list. The Mandalorian was number six, I'm sorry. And then there's two in here in a language I can't even read. So number seven and number nine, I have no clue what these things are. Um, yeah, crazy, different language. But yeah, that was this year in top Google searches. 
Um, very interesting. That like kind of gives you a very interesting review of what goes on this year. My uh, the number one Googled search term. This is the one that I wanted to talk about was Disney Plus. Now I got to give a lot of credit to Disney. They executed the rollout of Disney Plus phenomenally. Not, I mean, they advertised the crap out of this thing. I saw it everywhere. They tried their hardest to make sure that I bought it. Um, thankfully, I have some people in my family and friends who wanted to split it. And I know I talked about this maybe like the first or second show about the the race for everyone to split their logins for Disney Plus. Uh, but no surprise because not only do they have all these nostalgic shows that everyone our age grew up on and want to watch again, or if they have kids, want to introduce their kids to. But when they came out with Mandalorian, with the Star Wars conclusion, the hype around that has just been so big. I think they had Lady and the Tramp come out, but like nobody talked about that. And my expectations now with the Mandalorian are super high for what new shows. I know, uh, shout out to my friend Randy Yim. He's all on uh, the High School Musical show, which he said was really good. I probably won't watch that. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> um, and But Disney Plus, like... They made a big splash this year. They got a lot of subscriptions and uh, they were the number one Google thing of the year. So something that isn't on Google isn't on Google isn't on Disney Plus, but rather it's on Netflix. And this part of the show, I want to say this is the one holiday thing, the must do thing that you should do this year, uh, specifically with your family. If you're looking for a show or a movie to watch, the thing you need to watch this holiday season is called Klaus. K-L-A-U-S. Klaus is a, uh, it's kind of the origin of Christmas movie. And it's about the young protagonist who lives in a family who uh, more or less, they, they're the post office. They run mail. And he gets shipped off to this little island and he's got to be the postman for one year on this island. And... He finds a guy who makes toys and they start delivering presents. I'll kind of leave it there, uh, but it just made me feel the Christmas spirit, maybe like I've never felt, at least through a movie. My personal opinion, I, right when I was done watching it, I was like, this might be the best Christmas movie that's out there. And I know I. I like to talk into extremes. I put a lot of things out there as like the best or the worst or my favorite, but uh, give Klaus a chance. I promise you won't be disappointed. Your family will love it. It'll fill you with the holiday spirit. Uh, it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll make you super happy. It'll make you love the holidays. Um, you know, if you like holidays, I think those of you who don't like the holidays probably aren't gonna change your minds, but my holiday must do. Go watch Klaus on Netflix right now, or if you got some time with your weekend, Christmas Eve might be the best time to go watch this show, and uh, I promise you're going to like it. Alrighty, let me take a sip here. All right, the feedback was good on these two things, so I'm keeping it going. This week's, let me, let me step back here. I still got to figure out how I'm going to enter this, but... My meal of the week. We're going to start off here. The meal of the week comes from a restaurant out in Issaquah. I know, I made like the 30-minute drive out to Issaquah to hang out with another friend. And they took us to a place called The Black Duck. And when I'm driving to Issaquah, I'm like, The Black Duck? What kind of place is this going to be? Well, let me tell you. It's a pub. It's... Not a brewery, but they, they call it the cask and bottle. So they're very beer focused, uh, very duck focused, as the name would tell you. And so in this meal, here's how we started. First, we get the duck gravy poutine, right? Which was smoldering hot. The French fries were on fire. It like melted my mouth when they came out. It was in a cask skillet. Poutine all over the place. Absolutely phenomenal start. Make sure you get the poutine when you go to the Black Duck. Next thing that came out was Black Duck Drummies. These are just grilled duck legs. There was two of them, okonomi sauce and chives. Very simple. It was a duck. It was like a small little duck drumstick, 
but uh, just melt it off the bone, right? We took a fork, peeled it off because we were sharing it between a, a few people and I was shocked at how easy it peeled off the bone. Delicious part, uh, great start to uh, the duck. The next thing we got there was their signature black duck pie, which uh, cost $18 on, on this pizza. It's got duck, arugula, okonomi sauce, goat cheese, aioli, and pistachio. And yeah, sign me up again for this black duck pie. It, I don't think I ever had duck on pizza before. I, I had very interesting expectations walking in here because I'm just like, what? Like, duck? What's, what's it going to be? But this place blew it out of the water. The black duck pie was super delicious. And the final thing that we got there was the burger because when we asked the server, it was like, well, what does everyone get? What would you get? And they said, the burger is what everyone gets. And usually I'm a little skeptical when places are like, the burger is the thing to get. But this burger was like a... Every, Everyone who knows me knows that I love in and out It was like a very elevated uh, prime beef, oven-dried tomatoes, rosemary mayo, cheddar, and a tomato jam. Burger is $15. It comes with fries, tots, or greens. But the tots are what I would recommend you get this in the meal of the week because they weren't crunchy like normal tots. They kind of like melted in your mouth. But I really like that. It was, it was something different. I do love crunchy tots but the soft ones were still really good complemented the burger really well the burger just was perfectly cooked with the tomato and mayo and tomato jam it was just mm, mm, so good so good so that from the black duck in Issaquah shout out that's my meal of the week and uh yeah if you're looking for food recommendations and you're over there on the east side go to black duck it was super good all right, the next segment of the show is my featured business of the week. And so I've been talking about this part of the show and really what I want it to be. And some weeks it's going to be a business. Some weeks it's going to be a person. Some weeks it just might be like some ridiculous thing that I have to share. Uh, I got to figure out specifically what the name is. But right now we're going with the featured business of the week. And another east side. this is a double east side feature. And it's this place called Hui Lao Shan. And Hui Lao Shan is based out of Hong Kong. If you go to Hong Kong, you can see this spot. There's, it's more prevalent than McDonald's or Starbucks. It's on every corner around, around Hong Kong. And what they specialize in, mango dessert. Everything mango that you could possibly want is here. And I went there last weekend. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic dessert. I didn't feel that like sugary overload that you get from a lot of ice creams or chocolate cakes or a lot of other dessert spots because it was all fresh fruit they get 200 plus cases of mangoes a week to prepare all these and, and the big thing that's really popular their signature dish is called the mango chewy ball and it's uh this large bowl of mango and here's what's in it. it's pureed mango gets topped with a scoop of mango ice cream, and then they finish it off with chewy tapioca balls. So it's kind of like a mango boba, but more of like an ice cream style. And it was just super delicious. We also had this mango sampler that had a mango mochi ball that usually mochi is like really frozen. This was really squishy and it just melted in my mouth. If you want to see that, uh, check it out on my most recent TikTok post. You'll see it there. Um, but Hui Lao Shan, you're looking for a fruit-based dessert spot. They are my featured business of the week. They're out in Bell Red, uh, right next to Microsoft headquarters and I thought it was absolutely delicious. If you're out there and maybe you hit the black duck and then you go to Hui Lao Shan for dessert. It's definitely a spot that I probably wouldn't have normally went to and that's why I wanted to share it, but I got invited to go there. Didn't know 